for those that are interested, I'll try to explain uh, my take on what that picture designates. It's, it's, it's a Ken Wilber picture that is an integral thinking picture, which has the idea of major perspectives as part of it. Um, it, this play is a heavy, it, it's heavily drawn from um, Plato's Good, the True, and the Beautiful, although he adds another one which roughly correlates with um, essentially inter-objective systems thinking, chaos theory, that sort of thing, which there's a reason why I don't think Plato really understood that, and it has to do with sort of development, novelty, and how it's built, in my opinion. Um, and so, when we're navigating this, there is, in some regards, I think, a developmental component to it, but it's, it's more a native perspective thing. And I, I don't think it's really dealt with in that view, but I think it can be helpful, even though it's, it, it, it's not very precise. It's, but I think it is a way of moving forward in a certain way to better understanding um, comprehensiveness, roughly speaking. So again, this isn't something that's taken in by that theory, but I'm just playing with it a little bit. Uh, but here, this part is. So the left hand is internal, the right hand is external. So the left hand, you have the eye focus and the we focus. So the eye is very much like beauty, the artist. The eye of the beholder is an interior perspective. So I have uh, thoughts, feelings, and emotions. My thoughts and feelings and emotions are unique to me. So that's an artistic expression in relation to all others, in the sense that my interior is artistically enacting a particular universe, a particular subjective experience of all of reality that's unique to me, although it's playing in with all these other areas. You know, you sometimes hear in, in certain domains talk about like biopsychosocial needs, and I'm saying that this is very much that in a certain way, um, but we're cutting it up to get better understanding perhaps. And so you get the we, which is primarily a focus on intersubjectivity. When you and I understand each other, we understand each other, and there's a mutual resonance between us. That understanding can go in a felt sense way, in that you know I feel compassion to you, I feel care. It's an emotion, more or less. And it can come in a, a, a mental way. That is to say, this idea is transferred to you, and in that transfer of ideas, we understand each other, we have a new conceptual worldview together. Um, the next one is it, or objectivity, which roughly coordinates with, um, I would say, rationality or empiricism or science. The scientific mind is very particular, it-focused, on an individual object. It can dice it up and cut it up. And so, um, it is externally focused on the individual particular, third person. Um, the collective external is inter-objectivity, sort of the, the newer sciences of systems theory and chaos theory. Um, and I do believe that's partly why you know people like Plato didn't really take that into account or blended it into its. There wasn't really a distinction there. Um, it's just a fairly new area, territory, that we're navigating. And I think this is a, a system of complexity. The I, in a certain way, is more primitive than the we, and the it more primitive than the its. And so it's moving like this, in a certain way. And it's expanding, kind of getting bigger. Now, so, we have to look at this sort of fractally, and that's where it gets a little bit vague in the sense that, you know, you could be located, say, here, as a primary focus, but you, on a sub-fractal, you might be located here, which is more of an eye focus. And so, it kind of depends on, you know, the overall matrix, which gets it a little bit more complicated, but you are an embodiment, moment to moment, of at least three perspectives of the human. When I say just at least the three, is that um, what I'm arguing for here is that, you know, the first person maybe comes online in, in its very proto sense from the beginning of matter, from the Big Bang in a certain way, 
but it's very isolated. It's a proto-awareness in a certain regard. It trickles all the way down. With, with early life forms, you know, it starts to move into this, and you get a reptilian brain stem, and, and then, you know, we start to get the birds, and then we kind of cycle back up here in a new order. Now we're a primary focus of we within an I space. And then you get, you know, maybe the little squirrels, the raccoons, you get the dogs and the cats, the elephants. Now you're getting into an almost self-reflexive awareness. So now you're getting cycling back up into the it focus with an I sub-focus. And, and with that, you're kind of getting um, maybe the chimpanzees, the dolphins. And then you're getting into um, early hominid, you know, Homo erectus, etc. You know, and then then this is this here spectrum covers all of what we call sort of spiral dynamics, in my opinion, with a little bit of it in here. So the magical stage might be in there, the late latter part of the it, it we focus. Um, when you get into what what's called red, in my opinion, you're starting to move into that domain. You know, blue kind of into that domain. So the the, this gets a little bit confusing because I'm stacking things and those people might not know about spiral dynamics, but I'm going to explain it for those that do because it can be a little bit, I think it can be interesting. So, you know, the first step in the it, it, I focus would be sort of red. I focus in the sense of um, sort of uh, essentially power gods, you know, it's very narcissistic, sort of quote unquote narcissistic groups slave master orientation. With blue you kind of have more or less um, the absolutizing or structuralizing of a, a, a mythos, a we structure in the sense that it's a, it's a collective agreement upon a document as an absolute truth. And then with, with it, it, it focus, then you start to see the enlightenment paradigm that's orange and it's, it's you know, objective, objective, objective and it's kind of more full sense, um, empiricism, behaviorism. And then when you're getting down into this, and then you're getting into it, it, its focus. So you're starting to transition into a new way of thinking a little bit. So you get, you get the green sciences that kind of came up with postmodernism, relativism, because it's relativizing this it. It seems to be a trend when you move past it. That is to say, with the it, you start to relativize things to make... Um, to be able to uh, to move beyond it in a certain way. And then so that sort of ends this, and then we get into what you might consider the second tier, which would be its um, I. And, and with that, you get yellow, and then sort of, well, it gets a little bit confusing beyond that in a certain way, perhaps. But you, then you can cut it up in that fractal way in there, too. Um, so interestingly, you might say, is that in the next probably 30 years, maybe a lot sooner, uh, you know, we, we'll be breaking over this line. I'd say probably quite a bit sooner, probably, but I don't know for sure. And uh, in other words, it's just that this it focus is dying, that that we uh, cannot and and don't want and etc. That and that means that this individualist focus, you know, humans kill more of their own species than many mammals, almost all mammals, arguably. That makes sense in a certain way because mammals had more of a we focus. There was more of a collectivism. We bind together in an emotional kinship to survive. Um, with humans, uh, we think individually. And it, Although we have emotive capacity, it's a lot more open to massacres and dehumanization and these sorts of things. But I think what, you, what we're doing is we're moving down here, and a new focus of this will be the most expansive part of it is going to have a connectivity, an interrelationship, and a, and a uh, dismantling of separateness in a, in a pretty profound way that, that, as an individual, it's hard for us to even imagine at this point. Um, where the connectivity between internet and so forth, you know, it's, it's dangerous because what people like the New World Order within that construct, I think, really want to do is 
um, manufacture that so that we as individuals don't really have autonomy, that they're going to use this its understanding, interobjective systems theory understanding to manipulate us as autonom automatons, you know, as sort of mechanized beings if they allow us to live and, and kind of keep a, a very machine world that they sit atop of, like, like kings. Um, I don't think that's going to work. I think we've already got too smart for that, etc. I think we've got this. But that's, and so that's where we're moving, where we might have, um, you know, those technologies are still, I think, going to come online, but we just, we're going to monitor them so that, you know, we don't go down that route of totalitarianism and scientific dictatorship like stuff. Um, it's going to be more of a, a, a human plus experience where um, morality is much more enhanced. And, and with it, a greater degree of freedom, but new problems, and the problems are going to be a lot bigger and more complex. With every step in novelty, things become more complex, um, but you're, you're also freer from it in a certain way. So that's my take on it. And, and so, the, I, I, you know, when I, when I put people in a particular spot, and I did it pretty quickly, I, you know, I didn't spend that much time on it. You know, in, in lots of ways, you're inhabiting multiple ones because of the fractal nature of it. You know, you're, it's a spinning top, and there's, there's different parts on it that you're inhabiting and embodying. So it's not, it's not very exact. And, and I, I do kind of think that all of you guys are pretty integral in the sense that you're, you're looking into this fairly new space, or starting to, roughly speaking. That's my take.